Wasabi guys, Void here, coming back at you all for a special October edition of my 10 list videos, where I just go over 10 cards, usually they're underrated cards, but this time we're going to be going over some spooky cards, and I'm hopefully going to be doing multiple of these videos for this month until we finally reach October 31st, Halloween. This is in no particular order, except for color, converted mana cost, at typical order that I usually do my videos in. Now all of these cards are going to be spooky for some reason and usually the artwork, extremely creepy artwork and I know it's sometimes a bit subjective, sometimes it's not as scary to some people. I typically am not frightened by card artwork, it never really frightens me. I rather feel uncomfortable at the most whenever I deal with these cards but let's start it off here. The first card I have to show you all is Lich's Mirror. Absolutely just an eerie vibe to this card. You see this rather ghoulish figure there holding up what appears to be a mirror, but only that's not its real reflection. That is instead a reflection of a much younger, healthy looking woman rather than this ghoulish figure with decay and disgusting skeletal exposure and rotting flesh. And the flavor text appropriately says the mirror shows what you used to be rather than what you are. Very eerie and definitely if you are one of those who are afraid of dying or you're afraid of getting older, this is one of those cards that will resonate with you more often than not. Then the next card we have is something I myself can relate to, claustrophobia. One of my biggest fears is being buried alive, suffocated, drowning, things like that. I hate close spaces where I will die surely screaming my lungs out like this poor individual is right here. Six feet of dirt has muffled his screams. Absolutely terrifying. Being buried alive, being in a coffin, scratching bloody nails from trying to dig your way out of your coffin and it's never going to happen. You are dead. There is no way to save you. And the card itself is quite appropriate. The next card we have here is Plagiarize. Very creepy, very unsettling more or less just disgusting rather than horrifying for me. All you see is this gigantic eyeball. This is one of those homunculus creatures that we're used to from the Innistrad plane. Usually some gigantic eyeball, usually kind of like a cyclops approach to the homunculus, which is kind of a spinoff from what homunculuses are usually just miniature versions of humans. Whereas Innistrad took it to a whole nother level and just you had these disgusting humanoid abominations and that is what this clearly is. And the eyes are probably, well I'm talking about the eyes the human body actually has rather than the gigantic eyeball coming out of its mouth. You see teeth in where these eye sockets are. It's very creepy, very unsettling, but that is more or less what homunculuses from Magic the Gathering are typically going to be, rather creepy. The next one is just disgusting. If you hate blood and gore, uh, this one, Amnesia from the Dark. The Dark obviously is very similar to Innistrad, where it's kind of like a Halloween themed set. It's very old though, you had a lot of these different styles of artwork, and this one is just straight to the point. You have what needles sticking out of this guy's skin, but obviously the most frightening part about it is the huge, just whole, gigantic hole right through his head, and you see the blood just in there. Just disgusting, and it, I mean, it's appropriate. Yes, amnesia, you forget everything, and this is literally your brain dead. Very creepy, very unsettling. This is like something the kid who would talk about killing cats in his backyard would probably draw in school. Very creepy. You should probably talk to your guidance counselor immediately. Number five is Bane Wasp Affliction. Yet another fear of mine is being eaten alive by maggots or larvae. Just anything. Insects biting at your skin. The Persians back in the time of King Darius would pour this mixture of milk and honey on your skin, strap you to a boat, and push you out into the middle of a lake. And they would leave you there for about two weeks. They would pull you back in just to spread more milk and honey on your skin, purposefully keep you alive just to torture you. And usually these individuals would die within two weeks, just a long period of time to be tortured and suffering, having these insects gnaw at your flesh because you're covered in insect sustenance milk and honey that's going to keep them alive it's going to keep you alive more importantly you're going to be suffering and screaming 
and this card kind of reminds me of history class when I would learn about torture things like that and these maggots are obviously not wasps but they're the larvae that are just feeding off of this poor individual who obviously in the middle of literal hell just a terrifying card and the next one is one that I feel that most people recognize easily because it's just right there right in front of you just disgusting I don't think you need to I just don't really feel like you need to take a deep look at this card to know exactly why it makes people feel uncomfortable and that is of course macabre waltz this got a recent new artwork from shadows of our innistrad where it has liliana and some sort of zombie doing a very similar waltz type of dance whereas this is just two bloodied corpses looking they're just doing this dance and it's disgusting you have they're both just dripping with blood and you have one of the zombies or one of the I don't even know if they're zombies or just really messed up cannibals and one of them is just kind of like pulling at the eye socket of the other it's just very creepy very organic and disgusting if you're a agoraphobe this is probably one of your least favorite cards to look at and the very next one speaking of blood sucking we have Karu Bloodsucker from Cons of Tarkir now the cool thing about this card I will say it's not creepy to me I think it's very cool but a lot of people don't like it it's not your typical vampire that's what I like about it. it's very similar to Aether Revolt where we had the Yeheni character who was a vampire but vampire in more of the abstract sense and not the typical Bela Lugosi type of vampire that uses fangs to suck blood and they're relatively humanoid in shape. Well, this is still kind of humanoid in shape, but it's more or less just kind of like a creature. Just a gigantic tongue, uh, probably what it uses to suck blood, and has sort of like a fake human mask over top of its face, or whatever its actual face looks like. That's just creepy to think about that. The arms look a little elongated, so it's a little deformed, I would guess, but it's not exactly human, uh, or humanoid, I should say, what we typically expect out of vampires. But with the concept of Tarkir block, you just saw vampires uh, taken to this different sort of abstract take on what we typically think of vampires to be. So very unusual from that aspect, but just a creepy card, because it's a long tongue, it's a creepy sort of crawly creature that... It's not what we're used to seeing with vampires. That's all I can really say about it. A lot of people don't like it. Next we have from Born of the Gods, we have Forlorn Pseudodam or Sudama. Sudama, I can't say that word. It's very weird. It's Greek. Basically, you have this figure here from the underworld that is stealing children and taking them to the underworld. And the parents are obviously freaked out about this. They don't like this occurrence. They want to keep their children. That is their offspring. They obviously do not want to lose their legacy. They do not want the population to lose two more human beings. Why would they want to do that? They're a very primitive culture. Numbers count when you're fighting the Persians. You definitely don't want to lose two more children. But more or less creepy because of the aspect of actually losing your children to this supernatural force of this being in a similar way to children being killed stolen eaten by the it creature the pennywise clown people that are afraid of that shit now it really isn't that scary but you have forlorn sudama which is very similar in why it's scary you know people don't like losing their offspring they don't like losing their children to scary monsters and uh, this isn't so much a scary monster as it is just someone with a mask from the underworld which is a very big deal in the Theros plane. And next we have Scuttling Death, which all I can really say about this abomination, this spirit creature, is just look at the mouth and tell me that it is not an anus. Just try to tell me the, the, anything about this car that is redeemable. It's just a gigantic, insectoid-looking, disgusting thing that looked like it crawled out of the dark depths of the sea. Eyes are all messed up because it spending years in the darkness just disgusting slime and you know look at that asshole right where its mouth should be that is disgusting just creepy I mean if I saw this thing in real life oh I don't think I could live anymore I really don't think that there is anything in this world that would be redeemable if I just took one glance at this thing in real life I would honestly be scared shitless and it's supposed to be a spirit this is obviously from the Kamigawa block where we had a ton of these spirit creatures but they were just spirits they look like ghosts or they look like you know other things they look like spirits this doesn't look like a spirit to me this doesn't look like something we'd see from ghostbusters this looks like just a disgusting pile of 
insectoid abomination with an asshole, a human asshole I might add, for a mouth. That is just creepy. And then the very last card I have to show you guys, very spooky, and it is the hairy dog wiener that is Witchmaw Nephilim. It has teeth, has a tongue, a nice elongated tongue, just a slimy, hairy looking, bratwurst, whatever the hell it is, with arms and legs, they're all skinny arms, skinny legs. Just a wonder as to how in the hell this thing gets around, or what is its purpose. I know some people like the Nephilim, they like using them as commanders, but this thing is just disgusting. At this point you have to ask the artist what they were thinking of, what their direction was when they're going with this card. It had to be just completely trying to freak out the viewer, just freak out whoever happens to own this card. Just a weird, weird looking creature. There is no way that this person did not have some sort of penis fetish looking at their dog for a while. Maybe they got the idea, who knows. Just a weird card, very unsettling. But anyway guys, that's going to do it this time. Hopefully within the next week I make another 10 creepy cards video for Halloween of course. This was somewhat enjoyable, I like it. Let me know if you like this. If you want me to do more holiday themed videos, that would be kind of interesting for me to do. But anyway, you all have a wonderful day. Void here, gonna try to get some sleep.